York. I've got a great idea. When you get here, stop by my house. Tell the wife you're my long-lost brother. She'll treat you right. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Tom Hanks. Powerlifting demonstration with Helen Zechmeister and the Neville Brothers, plus Paul Schaefer of the band. And now, the original Elliot Ness and the Broadway version of The Untouchables, David Letterman! Thank you. Welcome to the show. It's uh, it's Friday night, and uh, I, I'm in a I'm in a terrific mood. Not only because this is our second Friday night in a row that we've been on the air, but uh, kind of a kind of a crazy thing happened. I do this about once a month. Me and my uh, volunteer fireman buddies get together, and they'll <laughs> they they come over to the place. And, and it happened again last night. We got really really drunk and and tried to flush a ham down the toilet. And it, I don't know. It's it, 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 uh, at the time, it was really quite funny. And this is not just another Friday show, ladies and gentlemen. This is late night. No, it is another Friday show. That's, there it is. That's what it is. Turns out it is. It is, it is or it isn't. It is just another Friday show. It is or it show. isn't. No, it is. It's a Friday show. That's what that just indicated there. What was it again? Well, it's the late night, the Friday edition. So you're saying that this is not just any show? No, I, I screwed it up. It's not just another show. It's yeah. our special late night Friday edition. Ah. You know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you quite honestly, it's been an adjustment for uh, those of us here on the staff and crew uh, learning now to work uh, a five-day week. <laughs> I know, we have your sympathy, don't we? Yeah. And, uh, but the hardest thing for me about uh, working on Fridays is I'm, I miss the folk dancing class. But you know, seriously. Ah. So here's what I was wondering. Uh, what, did, what did Gary Hart say yesterday when his wife asked him, anything good on TV tonight, honey? <laughs> This, is, this show, this is the kind of show you could only have on a Friday night. It's that good. We have uh, Tom Hanks is with us. And uh, also uh, a woman who is a, a fascinating person. She is, uh, her name is Helen Zeckmeister. And her name. You don't, you don't want to laugh at the woman's name. She's a, a lovely woman. She's here, and uh, we'll tell you what she does a little bit later, although I guess you've already mentioned it, haven't yeah. you, Bill? Okay. Well, thanks for ruining the surprise. Uh, and also, here's Paul now to tell you about our musical guests for the evening. Paul? Thank you very much. Well, it's a veritable plethora of funk over here on a Friday night because we have our usual Friday night visit from Mr. David Sanborn on the saxophone. David? And, and you know, the Neville brothers are with us today and I had a craving for some of that New Orleans kind of piano and so I prevailed upon Mr. Art Neville of the Neville brothers to nice to see you. sit in with us for the evening. I'll be hearing from uh, these Thank you very much, gentlemen, later. and we'll look forward to a big song from you guys a little bit later. Neville's... Uh, everybody. Yeah, everybody. With a the big Neville song. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me just make one brief announcement here. We're on Friday nights now forever, so to all you eight-year-old kids forever. out there who are, who are watching and getting ready to phone NBC complaining about your little dance party video show not being on, <laughs> do me a favor. Do me a favor. Get over it, all right? Because...
For one reason, you kids shouldn't be up this late anyway. You have school tomorrow. And for another reason, huh? Well, well maybe they don't have. Well, you should have. And, and let me tell you something else seriously from my heart. The reason that this country, the United States of America, is in the sorry mess it's in right now is because of music videos. That's the truth. So... Uh, we're going to do our viewer mail for you here in a minute. Well, what did I miss? What was that? Just a gratuitous shot of your band leader who loves you very dearly. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, do, do I have time for a little story or not? Yeah. Okay, now, yeah. Uh, this is insight into my personal life, and, and I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. When you show business, and particularly when you're a comedian, it's, you're not funny one hour a day. <laughs> no, no. Oh. You're not funny. You're not funny eight hours a day. You're funny around the clock. <laughs> You have to be funny because you are funny, and it's kind of an obligation to society in general. And, and so I'm always up, I'm always excited, I'm always in a good mood, and nobody knows that any better than the staff here at the show. Yeah. So, um, but I'll explain to you how you, this can be a burden. This morning I get up, and I'm going to run. I, I run most mornings, and it's in the heat and the humidity and the hills uh, up there in uh, uh, Connecticut, and running like six miles. And why can I do this? I have the strength of ten men. Now... <laughs> So I'm going up this long, steep grade, and I'm dying, and my knees are screaming, we're 80 years old, Dave. <laughs> so a guy in a big, a big Pontiac kind of leaning to one side, busted springs, that kind of guy, and he's wearing a t-shirt, and he's got a cup, and I think, it was probably coffee. Well, it turned out it was cup of noodles. It was like 11. He's eating already. <laughs> and he says to me, as, as I'm just barely making it up the hill, and he's in his big old American car there, and he says to me, you're going to have to try a little harder, Dave. Now, without blinking an eye, Without hesitating a second, I shoot back at this guy. Oh, yeah? Why don't you try a little harder? <laughs> Pretty good, huh? That's because... That's because... This is not a hobby. I'm funny like always that. 24 funny. hours. Always funny. I always... It's that hair trigger whip. Fast. That's Fast. right. Why don't you try a little harder? Ha <laughs> ha! Quick and bright. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're quick and you're bright. What a dork I am. All right. What are we doing? We're out of time now, aren't we? Top 10 or male? I don't want to get us backed up because it's a Friday show. Don't, don't want to disappoint those grade schoolers. Uh, from the home office in Scottsdale, Arizona tonight, uh, top 10 New York City science projects. Here we go. Number 10, summer heat and rotting garbage, fuel of the future. Number nine, buoyancy and mob corpses. Number eight, Roaches and music, pretty much any nightclub in town. Number seven, trigonometry of the ricochet. Number six, inducing unconsciousness in strangers. Number five, shoving matches, the universal language. Number four, removing flesh from a gold chain. Ew. Number three, men who kiss each other. Number two, bio pneumatics, token sucking observed. Uh, and number one, lab rats, sissy cousins to the real thing. That's right, kids. The videos are gone. <laughs> let's uh, let's do the viewer mail. I'm I'm worried. We're late, aren't we? Or should we? Huh? We are. Right? Okay. Uh, letter number one. Actual letters, ladies and gentlemen, from actual viewers. Let's begin. Letter number one. Dear Dave, I uh, just thought your audience would like to know that I'm from Canada and I repair vacuum cleaners. Yours is always Ralph Myra, West Palm Beach, Florida. Paul, this uh, this letter reads like your job application. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. I think I uh, number two, out. dear Dave, on a recent show, you had Betty Davis and Marv Albert. How does Betty Davis get to go on before Mar Marv Albert? Uh, this makes no sense to me. From Joseph A. Del Daca, South Amboy, New Jersey. You know, uh, Joe, I, I think we were all a little surprised that Betty Davis was our first guest that night. If I remember correctly, it was an hour before showtime. We were trying to decide who were... Pretty good. 50 feet... <laughs> Four. 50 feet, four inches, Marv. Not a bad put. Go ahead, uh, Miss Davis. Jeez, wow, no point in measuring that one. Okay, Marv, you'll be second. Betty, you're first. Get Miss Davis a towel, will you, Betty? Sure. Right. Thank you very much. We 
yeah, why don't you try a little harder? I had to put together a little book of those uh, snappy uh, comebacks. Number three, uh, Dear Dave, last year I asked my 83-year-old grandma if she watched the David Letterman show. She said, no. I said, why not? She said, it smells. Last week I asked her if she watched your show, and she said, he's nice. Dave, how in the hell did you change her mind? Fondly, Lynn Tucker, Palace Heights, Illinois. Uh, well, then, let's just say that I'm a man and your grandmother is a woman, okay? <laughs> Uh, letter number four. Dear Dave, I enjoyed your programs from Las Vegas. Oh, you're the one. But where in the hell were the dancing waters? Just a fan, Donnie Bowers, Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, boy, this is awful. Paul, can you believe this? Oh, Dave, it's, it's sickening. Yeah. It's sickening. Why must our viewers use unnecessary profanity? Yeah. They could have said where the heck were exactly. the dancing waters, but instead they contaminate the show with their gutter talk, they even underline right. it. It's you know, this is bad. Right there. This is bad any time, sure. Dave. It's bad any time, but especially tonight, especially on cameraman father and son night. Yeah. I mean, these kids are. No, 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 no. These these kids are impressionable. Yeah. They're impressionable. Exactly. They hear this stuff. They're gonna repeat it. You know. Dad, what the hell is this button for? You see that? Do you see that? There you go. That's exactly what exactly. I'm talking about. Dave, go to the next letter before cameraman father and son night is completely ruined. All right. Boy. <laughs> cameraman father and son night. Letter number five. Dear Dave. Now it's completely ruined. It's ruined, sure. Uh, dear all. Dave, you should try doing one entire show using a strong <laughs> Scandinavian accent. Think of the ratings. Al Damon, Seattle, Washington. Uh, you know, this, this brings something to mind. Uh, quite frankly, I have been waiting for just the right opportunity, and, and I think that this may be it. I, I've, always wanted to do, I've always wanted to do my Viking routine, and uh, I, I have to put on my helmet, and it does. I use a little accent, a Danish uh, kind of a thing. Norwegian, I guess. Uh, let me put the hat on here. I'll just get the, uh, I can get the sword. I'm Dave Letterman. Do not be alarmed. If you are watching this tape, it means that you are out of danger, and one of two things must have happened. Either I began to sing with a fruity falsetto, or I was about to do a goofy foreign accent. Whichever the case, the system shut down. I was stopped in time and saved from certain embarrassment, and you, the viewers, were spared a painful display. These are dangerous times for TV viewing. Let's all be thankful that the system does work. Thank you. Dangerous time. Okay. We got a, uh, we got a good show here. Uh, Tom Hanks is with us, Helen Zeckmeister, and the Neville Brothers. This and a lot more. So come on. Thanks for being here. show. Tom Hanks is going to be here in just a second. You understand, Paul, that the guy was trying to insult me because I wasn't running very fast up this hill. Yeah, I when got that. When he said, you're going to have to try a little harder. I got that. Yeah. And what did you hit him with again? I said, oh yeah, why don't you try a little harder? <laughs> Thank you. You gave us some of that quick, brilliant right. stuff that yeah. the kids My do. My sides are still sore from laughing so hard. <laughs> Uh, our first guest tonight, a talented gentleman who has starred in such motion pictures as Splash, uh, The Money Pit, Nothing in Common, and his latest, co-starring Dan Aykroyd, is Dragnet. With all his success, his bio claims that he is still gregarious and approachable. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tom Hanks. crazy. Uh, I tell you. Nice to see you here. Very nice to be back, sir. Gregarious and approachable. Is that, is that true? Listen, that's uh, how I've been described by, oh, so many people. Gregarious, <laughs> approachable, and I'm still trying to figure out just what the heck gregarious means. Yeah. Out, is, outgoing? Is that gregarious? I think outgoing. Is maybe. that what it is? Yeah, okay. You like, you like people and so forth? Yeah, I guess and so. Then not many stars could be described as gregarious. It's, uh, this is a select few. Yeah. I think me. You? 
Elvis and uh, <laughs> he was he was a the, people person. The, the wasn't Kang, he? Like the Kang of rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. like Elvis? Oh, I mean, I, as a matter of fact, I've been going through a major Elvis phase. It started. Uh, I was reading some articles, and you know, a, a '60s weekend on one of those great rock and roll radio stations, mm -hmm. and starts trying to figure out another format and haven't been able to. <laughs> uh, and I, I went off and I rented. Uh, I was in a, a video jag, and I rented really the best films of, of Elvis Presley, the finest motion pictures Elvis Presley made. Really, ah. Jailhouse Rock, Jailhouse Rock yeah. and Clambake, really, the two finest of the, uh, <laughs> of the Elvis films. And I, I just, uh, I noticed, this may be a rhetorical question, maybe you'll have the answer. Did Elvis forget how to dance the more <laughs> movies he made? I don't know. Have you seen this? In <laughs> Jailhouse Rock, he did the, his own choreography, he's sliding all over the place, yeah. he's coming down poles, dancing, balancing on chairs. I'm going to stand up for Clambake. Uh -huh. Clam bay. Clam bay. <laughs> Everybody's doing a clam bay. It had deteriorated. It was, it was like... Uh, it was like, a, it's like, a, uh, like a recessive dance gene was in the Presley family yeah. or something. Uh, just, uh, now you, you, you're, you're like one of the busiest men uh, making films today. Yeah, the Dragnet, of course, is open. Has it opened? Is no, it, it opens next week. Opens so next week. Know, be a big hit, this thing, a runaway Orlando blockbuster. Let's hope so, yeah. sir. And, and you've also recently done a film about uh, stand-up comics, yes, right? Yes, with Sally Field, yes, yeah. actually. And you actually performed as a comedian, right? I went around to various clubs in Los Angeles Where'd and you also go? here in New York. I went to the Improv. Mm -hmm. Uh, I went to the Improv in the Valley. Mm -hmm. I went to the Improv in the Simi Valley. He's, Bud Friedman's <laughs> got about nine million Improvs all over the place. He's pumping them out there, getting them in. But yeah, I went off and did some. And you know, hecklers, there's only one way to handle them. How's that? Oh, yeah, well, you try harder, Kyle. <laughs> That's right. You can't. You can't, it takes a while. Yeah, you can't teach that. No, You're born no, with you it. Really, well, and, and you can learn with it. it. It's much better than, oh, shut up, stupid, you know. <laughs> or, look at the cow you're with, you know. That's, uh, that's, that's, uh, now, you're, uh, you're a very witty fellow yourself. Have you ever done Well, uh, I'm gregarious as hell, yeah. I'll give you that. Uh, and I find you approachable. No, there you go. Uh, but have you ever done stand-up comedy? No, I never had, this? and so it was a necessary part of research. It, what, what were your observations? It's tough, isn't it? It's very hard. Yeah. You stay up extremely late, like you do a show, oh, well, you do a show hopefully at 10.30, but mm -hmm. more often than not, you get these really lousy slots. Yeah. I mean, piece of junk slots. Bud, yeah. 11.30, 125, Bud, yeah. I'm a 10 o'clock guy. So I automatically, <laughs> automatically just began complaining, and so all the comics said, hey, you're really getting this down. You really got to yeah. complain more on drink tickets and neat stuff like that. Were, were, you, were you just mortified the first time you got up in front of an audience? And stank to high heaven, yes. I yeah. couldn't believe what was happening. Yeah, something yeah. would be desperately wrong if you weren't really scared, and two, if you turned out to be great the first time. Oh, and, and neither of those things, well, one of those things happened. I was I was really scared. It was yeah. absolutely horrifying. It was at Igby's, a club in, uh, in what I also did it here in New York at the uh, Catch a Rising Star and, and the comic strip. Yeah. <laughs> fine institutions of higher comedy. Uh, did, you, did you ever get to the point where you were really comfortable with it and you, you enjoyed it and you thought, well, this might be a really nice way to uh, augment my career here? It's a, sad, it's a sad life, Dave, and in no way, shape, or form did I ever want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's very fun, but it's, it's just hard work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I'm guessing you know. I, I went through that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. did. You're, you're an institution, Dave. I am. And you should be institutionalized. <laughs> Thank you. Well, seriously, Anton, stay up with you us see here. see that? Yeah. You see that? Um, see, see. I tell you what, now, do you want to share some of the stuff you did uh, if, with, from um, your act? Or? Well, no, I just did some. Oh, that was it. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right. Uh, then we'll, uh, we'll do a commercial, and we'll be back here with the gregarious and approachable. <laughs> Fall. Now, that's the song. That's, uh, what is that? Word up. Yeah, Word up. And you said you weren't going to do that anymore, because why? Well, because it's become a commercial for Cherry Coke. Yeah. It's no longer Word Up, but I couldn't resist. All right, well, it still sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, Tom, <laughs> uh, you recently in Israel, again on a film? Uh, yeah, I was, I was working in Israel, yes. Yeah. This was about a year ago, and I felt like a, a, a real jerk. I lost my passport in Israel, which is a real stupid thing to yeah, do you're not supposed in to any country in the no. world, not just Israel. Don't, don't leave anywhere without she, your passport. She really shouldn't do it. Funny enough, I got one in three days. <laughs> I got a new one right in three days. Is that right? It's impossible to do in the United States, yeah. but I got a new one in three days. But how did you lose it to begin with? Well, I, I, when my folks were over, we went to the famous ruins of Caesarea. Anybody know Israel? The ruins of Caesarea, a very famous place in Aqueduct. A beautiful place, a great land, and the car was, was left open, and... Oh, somebody stole it, you think? Well, I didn't want to say that because I, I would not want anybody to think that Israel is not a very safe and nice place to well, go. Well, probably it is, stolen by an American tourist. I'm guessing... <laughs> uh, 
right. Well, I, let's hope so, because if it was stolen by somebody else who would put it to ill use, some, mm -hmm. I have visions of, you know, some guy with a towel on his head, an AK-47 under his jacket, <laughs> yeah. slapping my passport down at JFK. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tom Hanks. I want to see Statue of Liberty. <laughs> very, it's a very scary thing. Could happen. So, uh, uh, but overall, you had a good time there. Oh, it was great. Yeah. It, it's, it's a very small country, so you can get around. You can drive around very easily. I once rented a car, and I drove across something called the Wilderness of Zin. Z-I-N, the Wilderness of driving from Jerusalem uh, to the planet Mongo. It was no, just, no. just kind of make a left. <laughs> no. It was like that. It's, very, <laughs> yeah. it's a beautiful country. It's a very yeah. nice place. Uh, and you know, on Friday, they knock off about 1 o'clock, Dave. Yeah. One o'clock, they're yeah. you know sipping the cappuccinos at the at the Dizen Goff, and yeah. here in America, of course, we have to work on Fridays. We're don't still we, Dave? hard at work, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, telling yeah. you. Shabbat Shalom, Dave. Did, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, <laughs> did you uh, 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 driving is the same over there? You drive on the same side of the street? Yes, you do, yeah. and you drive usually very small cars. Yeah. I got I got this little Daihatsu. I don't know what kind of car it is. Yeah. Is it made in Korea? A Daihatsu? No, I have no I'm idea. Not familiar with this a thing. It's about the size of these two chairs wrapped in metal. This mm -hmm. is about what it is. <laughs> It has tires on it the size of those push lawnmowers, you know. <laughs> They're not the motor kind. Like the, the, yeah, about that big. And we clocked that thing up to 140 kilometers an hour, yeah. which I think is about 35 in American miles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really sure. Did you uh, uh, have any trouble with the uh, uh, rules I, and regulations? I, Anything uh, different? I got stopped at one point because I was... I was driving without a driver's license, which ah, is not a smart now, thing to do. No passport, no driver's license. Well, what can I say? You're in the country illegally. I was trying to explain to this 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 police officer why I'm driving without a license. This is how can you can't do that. <laughs> you have to. What do you think you are? <laughs> you have to drive with a driver's license. You can't drive without a driver's license. <laughs> and uh, my my good girlfriend was there, lovely Rita Wilson. We were having a great time, and uh, she had her driver's license, right. and she said, "Well, I have my driver's license." I said, "I'm not talking to you. You're." Not not driving. He is driving. He does not have a driver's license. I, I try to show him my American Express card that I got. But does this do anything? No, this is not a driver's license. This is American Express credit card. Why are you driving? You are not supposed to drive. You don't have a license. Why are you driving? I said, well, because I'm the man. I'm the man, and I like to drive. I'm the man. I feel stupid. And then he says, the, the, the Israeli police officer says, okay, you can drive. <laughs> no, you really should. You should let me. <laughs> that's, oh. that's, that's word for word verbatim exactly what happened. That's great. Uh, now you're you're America's favorite film star, oh, aren't you? No. You know you are. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about Dragnet. Th yeah, this to Dra me seems Dan like a, a great and, idea for a movie. Joe you, Friday. Yeah, you and Dan Aykroyd. Well, that must have been a lot of fun, huh? And Joe Friday. Uh, uh, Dragnet. Uh, Dan is Joe Friday. It was yeah. a blast. Yeah, yeah. it's was, it was a lot of fun. Big budget film. This Huge thing? budget. And a massive amount of money went to get the music. The three main pieces of music you have to have when doing Dragnet is the the theme, dum da dum dum, the Dragnet <laughs> sting, as it's called, the walking down the hallway music, uh -huh. which is. Um, dun -da -da, dun -da -da -da, dun -da -da. And you also need the upbeat closing credits music, which da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da, which curiously enough, if you play backwards, is the theme to Adam Twelve. Mm -hmm. We had no idea. <laughs> they just took the music, turned it around like that. I'm not familiar would... with the third one. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's over the closing credits I know so the of the two. of the Dragnet '67, the color Dragnet. Yeah. That's the closing credits. Yeah. That, do we have a clip here? We have no clip? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a, it's it's a, new, opening it's soon. a new policy. Yeah. They don't want to put out too well, many. Well, you, you have no license, no passport, <laughs> and no clip. No clip. <laughs> what a goofball. Uh, geez, Tom, uh, thanks for being here. It's oh, great to have you with us. Always a pleasure to be on your show. And Even on Friday, Dave. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> sorry to drag you out on Friday. Nice to see you. Miss Friday night videos at its new time. It's a good show. It's a late show. It's a good show. Gilbert Gottfried and Paul Reiser play new videos from David Bowie, Whitney Houston, Ozzy Osbourne, and more. And Saturday is just a good old time with Willie Nelson and Danny DeVito. Ain't that special? A little bit rock and roll and a little bit country this weekend. Like wildfire, it's. Pro Nice 
job. Nice job. You guys were rehearsing Orleans, today, too. weren't you? Thank you. Sounds great. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, Monday on the uh, program, folks, Alan Alda will be here, singer Lou Reed, and uh, basketball star Michael Jordan. Mm. Mm. This smells like a rerun. I think it might be. Uh, also on the uh, program tonight, we have uh, yet to come, Helen Zeckmeister will be out here. And I thought you'd change your tune. And uh, in addition to that, we'll hear uh, more from Paul on the uh, band of the Neville Brothers. Uh, okay, folks, here we go. Uh, you know, a recent survey of television viewers shows that many Americans aren't sure what they're watching and don't much care either. So that's why we present this next videotape feature with pride. It's our visit to the home of Pete Fadovich. Hi. Well, today is the day we normally take our uh, camera crew out and show you something interesting in and around New York. You know, a, a tour of the theater district, a tour of Times Square, down to Battery Park, uh, the zoo, or we could drop stuff off of a building or mash stuff in a press. Uh, well, frankly, it turns out that we're, uh, we're out of ideas. So uh, our associate director, Pete Fadovich, says, look, if, if that ever happens and you need a place to go, just come on up to my house and I'll, and I'll show you around. So that's what we're going to do today, right, Pete? Yeah, I'm so glad you came, Dave. Well, thank you for you inviting know, us, Pete. Th that's a lovely day. Beautiful day. It's yeah. only 90 degrees. Yeah. Let's go in. Come we're on, Dave. Inside. I'll show you the best part of the house. Going to take a look at Pete's uh, favorite part of the house right now. Yeah, thanks a lot, Pete. What time uh, is lunch, by the way? Oh, I think about 2 o'clock. Dave, watch oh, your head. Jeez. Oh. oh you'll, be, you'll be all right. You'll be okay, Dave. That happens to me a lot. Like being in a submarine here. Yeah. Look at this. See? Uh, I uh, I did uh, I did oh, this the paneling basement. here. And what what's in here, Pete? Oh, this is I put in a John. Uh huh. A John and a sink. Did Did you feel like you had to label it for the family members? Yeah. So look at some of your photos here. Okay. How's the piece going, Hal? <laughs> How long have you worked at NBC, Pete? Oh, about 29 years. Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin. What yeah. did you do with Buzz Aldrin? You're not the guy who went 10, 9. Yeah. You were? Yeah. 8, 7. seven. You got him off? Eight. You launched yeah, him? got him off. Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. Well, look at the size of those cufflinks. Boy, they're big. <laughs> Which wife do you suppose got those? <laughs> <laughs> and he's wearing a scarf, and I notice here... Jack Parr is also wearing a scarf. That must have been a, kind of like an NBC trademark, huh? Yeah, I think they gave him away. Should I start wearing a scarf? Yes. And here, what is this, Pete? Some kind of a, a little skit sketch. There. Yeah. Little sketch uh, uh, in the army. Uh, that's something to do with uh, I personal of... hygiene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my picture. That's it. Pete, I'd like this one back, if you don't mind. Uh, all right. Okay. Let's go do something else, Pete. Come on. Okay. How's it going now, Hal? Picking up. <laughs> Oh, jeez, Pete. Oh, oh, not again. Not yeah. again, Dave. Woo. Oh, my goodness. My, uh, not again. Well, this is nice, Pete. What is it? One of the few floor-mounted salad bowls. What's that hold? About 40 gallons of salad? Oh, easy. Yeah. This is a little town. Nice Dave. town, yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. What would happen if some night after work, you came home and walked uh, down the middle of the street with your pants off? Oh, they'd know who it was. Yeah, <laughs> but they, there would be no problem. No, right? no they'd problem. <laughs> Okay, Bales. I go. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. Good enough. Dave. Yeah. Let me try one of those. Oh, okay. Sure. I don't know if this will work on the accordion, but try Lady of Spain. Oh, all right. Yeah. Anytime you want to come back, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Dave. Thanks a lot, Pete. Okay. See you next week. Bye, Bye Dave. <laughs> We'll be right back here with Helen Zuckmeister. Thank you, Paul. Our uh, next guest is the sole possessor of eight world weightlifting titles, and that's probably because she is the only person competing in her age group. 
Uh, from Los Altos, California, folks, please welcome 82 year old weightlifter Helen Zeckmeister. Oh, Helen. Hi, Helen. Nice to see you. How are you? Hi, come on, come on down here, Helen. Right down here. Helen. Nice to see you. Helen. Do you want me to lift her? Yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, talk here for a second. How, how long have you been uh, lifting like this, Helen? For competition, about eight years. Eight years? Mm -hmm. And uh, all your life have you been physically active? Yes, I was yeah, a What did gymnast, you do before? A gymnast? And yeah. a ski racer. Uh -huh. And a track star. Mm -hmm. How, how was it that uh, that late in life you took up weightlifting? Well, I was in the weight room. And what were you doing in the weight room? <laughs> fooling around like the rest of the people. Uh -huh. <laughs> lifting little weights. And there were two competitive uh, weightlifters mm -hmm. there, and I saw how much they lifted, so I tried to copy them, mm -hmm. and I succeeded, do, do and you then they gave me the belt. You have the belt. Now, do you, do you enjoy doing it? Yes. Now, uh, and I don't mean any disrespect by this next question, but is it all right for a person your age to be lifting huge hunks of well, iron? Well, it took me a little while to convince our doctor, but uh -huh. he finally gave in. <laughs> he, he did give in. Yes. And, and do, you, do you have to stretch or any warm-up exercises? Yes, yeah. I stretch. Every weightlifter stretches yeah. before, and then we do, we work out five days a week, I two see. hours. Do you, do you have to grease yourself all up? No, <laughs> weightlifters don't grease. Only the, the bodybuilders. Now, what's do the difference that? between a bodybuilder and a weightlifter? Well, a bodybuilder mainly is interested in showing every little muscle that mm -hmm. he has. Uh, That's real lift. precision work, yes. isn't it? Yeah. And they work a hundred times with I'm one muscle. Have some all over your hand. No. <laughs> Uh, okay. And, and power lifters and weight lifters are interested how much That's right. they can better All their right. lifting. Now, I guess what we're going to do here, uh, we're just going to start, right? And you, uh, how much is on here now, Helen? 135. 135 uh, pounds? No, no, I beg your pardon, 155. 155. And, and, and may I ask how much you weigh? 138. 138. So this is well beyond your actual body weight, isn't it? Right. Okay. And what style of lift is this? Deadlift. A deadlift, okay? Uh -huh. All right, Helen, go right ahead. All right. <laughs> Drum roll, Anton. 100. It's 100, 150 some? 155. 155. Here we go. That's the deadlift. Now we're going up to 185? Uh -huh. All right, do we change the weights here? Yes, my husband will. How do you do? What, what is your name, sir? Joe. Joe, nice to have you. This is your husband. Uh -huh. Also a weightlifter? Yes. Okay. And then uh, do we have the, where are the other weights, Joe? Right there. All right, we, both of these? No, just the big one. Just the big one. Okay. All right. Oh, oh my back! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Slides it right on there? Uh-huh. Okay. Is it, should it be uh, uh, notched up or something, tightened down, or is no, that? No, I don't need that. Okay, we don't want it sliding off and, and hurting anyone, though. No. So they won't fall off, Joe. Are you sure, Joe? Joe. <laughs> Joe just threw up his hands and wandered off. <laughs> Maybe I better get a little of that too, Helen. You know, you mind? Okay. You can take the whole thing home. Yeah. Right here, the, the same lift, the same style of lift. Yes. 185 pounds. Is, is there anyone else close to your age doing this? No. Okay. I'm well, the only crazy one. Yeah. Uh, do we do we have time for one more or not? Yes. Well, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> According to Helen, we have plenty of time. So. Huh? This is her husband, George, not Joe. Joe. I'm sorry. I miss I miscalled you, uh, Joe. Okay. Now, how much is this, Helen? Two o five. Two two o five. All right. And again, the deadlift. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Give me a second. I'm supposed to have three minutes between each lift. Yeah, but this is TV, I Helen. Know. Sorry. <laughs> Am I hurrying if, up? If you can't produce, you're gone. You understand that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs>
it. We'll get somebody who can do the job, Helen. I'll let you do it. We don't need these excuses. I'll let you do it. Oh, no, I couldn't. Uh, no, I couldn't. Uh, yeah. Now, do you, are you all right? Do you want to wait a little while? Because we don't want to force this on no, you, it's seriously. Okay. It's okay. Are you sure? Uh-huh. All right. 205 pounds. for being here. Uh, we're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back with the Neville Brothers. Are you? Is everyone ready? Paul, are we ready? Everybody ready? All right. Uh, well, it's certainly quite a treat to have our next guest performing here tonight in the studio along with our band, uh, known as the First Family of New Orleans Music. This is a copy of their uh, latest album right here called Uptown. Folks, please welcome the Neville Brothers. Yeah. 
that sounded great. Now, who, uh, somebody introduce the group here. Why don't you just start? What's your name? All right, my name is Charles Neville. Charles, nice to see you. Who, who else is here tonight? Aaron Neville. Aaron, your brother? Yeah. You guys are all actual brothers. They're all actual uh -huh. brothers. Art Neville. Art, nice Hi. to see you. I'm Cyril Neville. Cyril, nice to have you here. Um, you're, you're, uh, you've lived in New Orleans all your life? Yeah, mostly. Yeah, and are you traveling around the country now? Or? Yes, we are. Oh, good. So, and uh, on a big tour? Yeah, this is the beginning of two months. Oh, good. Well, I hope it's very successful for you. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. You guys sounded great tonight. Thank you. Oh, right. uh, what did you think of Helen Zeckmeister? Oh, hey, she's a little more than me. <laughs> Take her with you for security, maybe. Yeah. Um, my thanks to uh, everybody who is here tonight. Tom Hanks, of course, and uh, Helen Zeckmeister. Tomorrow, kids, after the big weekend, it's uh, Alan Alda, Lou Reed, and Michael Jordan. It's a rerun, so don't worry about it. Good night, everybody. Thank you for being here.